Joe Studwell, How Asia Works, Success and Failure in the World's Most Dynamic Region Step into the world of Asia's economic resurgence with the book How Asia Works, Success and Failure in the World's Most Dynamic Region by Joe Studwell. Gain insights into the key strategies and policies that have propelled Asia from a once-lagging continent to an economic powerhouse. The book summary delves deep into aspects such as the significance of household farming, land reforms, investment in manufacturing, and the role of competition and export promotion. Navigate through the journey of Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and China and witness how their calculated moves have transformed these nations into formidable global players. Learn valuable lessons that can be applied to other developing economies to set them on the path to prosperity. Success Secrets of Asian Economies Successful Asian states transformed into economic powerhouses by promoting small-scale household farming that maximizes output by effectively using the available labor force. Large-scale farming generates few jobs and low agricultural output. Human labor-intensive techniques are crucial to getting the highest yields possible. Promoting household farming also creates jobs in developing countries. The rise of economic powerhouses such as Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, and China has got everyone wondering how they made it happen. Surprisingly, these countries promoted small-scale household farming instead of shifting prematurely to large-scale farming. Household farming maximizes output by effectively using the available labor force while generating jobs that help create a thriving economy. While large-scale farming seems the most efficient, it does not create higher output or better quality as seen in the manufacturing sector. Instead, only fertilizer and intensive labor can improve yields and quality. In fact, mechanization from large-scale farming can be harmful in poor countries where labor is abundant. Human labor-intensive techniques such as planting and harvesting by hand yield higher agricultural outputs than machines and large-scale farming. Promoting household farming also creates more jobs in developing countries since the industry and service sectors may not be strong in these regions. Hence, an agricultural sector composed of household farms that offer lots of jobs is vital until better alternatives for employment come along. This simple strategy proves that when it comes to agriculture, it is not the size that matters, but rather the approach. Land Reform for Economic Development Land reform is the key to promoting household farming. Successful experiences in Japan and Taiwan prove that after redistributing land among people, economic inequality reduced and farmers' output grew, which created a stable economic base for further progress. Promoting household farming demands an answer to the land problem, specifically the question of who owns the land and who needs it. The solution to this problem is land reform, which involves redistributing the land among people, and it has helped develop economies in various countries. For example, Japan struggled to gain popular support from US-backed regulation after the World War II, in part because of the unpopularity of American forces. However, Wolf Leijinsky, an agricultural advisor, understood that land reform was crucial to creating support from the working class, as he had witnessed during the Russian Revolution. This understanding led to the implementation of surprisingly radical legislation, including a maximum three-hectare limit for farms that forced wealthy landlords to turn over their excess land. The land was then redistributed among poorer farmers, leading to rural output and consumption growing above pre-war levels by the early 1950s and economic inequality being significantly reduced. Taiwan is another country where successful land reform occurred after the Chinese Civil War. Here, after being advised by American policymakers, the defeated Kuomintang government sought more popular support by redistributing land worth the equivalent of 13% of the country's GDP. After that, the amount of farmers who possessed their own land increased from 30% in 1945 to 64% by 1960. As a result, the Gini coefficient, which represents perfect equality, 0, or perfect inequality, 1, improved from 0.56 at the start of the 1950s to 0.33 by the mid-1960s. Following the land reforms, 
gross output of foodstuffs increased by half in Japan and three quarters in Taiwan, creating a stable economic base for further growth. These experiences prove that land reform is the key to promoting household farming, reducing economic inequality, and creating a stable economic base for further progress. The importance of agriculture to economic growth. The agricultural industry serves as the cornerstone of any developing economy. By establishing a strong foundation in agriculture, a country can shift towards manufacturing industries like steel, cars, and textiles, which is the best policy to create growth. This is because manufacturing does not require a highly educated workforce, and manufactured goods trade more easily on the global market. Although the manufacturing industry can benefit from free trade, it needs to be protected in the early stages to imitate and improve foreign technologies until they're able to produce competitive products themselves. Therefore, protectionist policies that limit imports serve as the best strategy to nurture the manufacturing industry in developing countries until it is strong enough to face global competition. Ultimately, free trade should be the country's ultimate goal, it's only feasible once the manufacturing industry has been efficiently developed. Steps to Industrialization The process of developing a developed economy takes careful planning and investment. Industrialization starts with government investing in the manufacturing sector. Japan's industrialization, for example, began with pilot factories. After these factories were sold to private entrepreneurs, they could stand on their own, at which point legislation to support entrepreneurs was necessary. This legislation included lifting import duties on certain goods, even if it damaged local economies. Japan's Shibusawa mill ended its chronic trade deficit, and by 1914 cotton textiles accounted for 60% of all Japanese exports. Export discipline is the third factor in successful industrialization policy. Fostering economic growth To promote economic growth, governments need to nurture developing companies through promoting exports and building domestic competition. Successful countries like Taiwan and Japan subsidized companies that exported the most. However, South Korea went a step further by making bank credit dependent on exporting rates. This forced companies to either merge with more successful peers or go out of business. South Korea also prepared its companies for the world market by setting up three private firms to compete in the domestic market for its car industry. In contrast, Malaysia let a state monopoly supply its domestic market, leading to a lack of competitiveness. During the booming years of the 80s and 90s, a financial crisis in 1997 showed that the northern countries, which bolstered export and competition, recovered much faster than the southern countries, like Malaysia and Thailand. As a result, successful countries today have GDPs per capita four times larger than countries that neglected competition. The pitfalls of premature deregulation Financial deregulation may not always be the optimal policy, as it can have adverse effects on economic growth and technological development. Malaysia's decision to deregulate its stock exchange in 1989 led to banks' preference for lending to high-earning speculators, resulting in limited financing opportunities for businesses. A similar trend can result from incomplete deregulation, as was the case in Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, where the government directed funds to specific projects to promote technological development and manufacturing. However, Singapore and Hong Kong's success as financial hubs demonstrates that deregulation can work in some circumstances. Overall, the government's ability to create a competitive technological industry depends on carefully balancing financial regulation and deregulation. China's Transformation China's economic transformation began with Deng Xiaoping's adoption of three development strategies that other northeastern Asian states had already used. The first strategy involved maximizing agricultural production by reinstating household farming and allowing farmers to sell their excess production on an unregulated market. The second strategy was opening China to international trade and technology, which helped develop competitive products. Lastly, Xiaoping invested in development by taking control of financial institutions. The policies instituted by Xiaoping have enabled China to become a leader in agricultural output, thermal turbine production, and banking assets owned by state-run banks. 
This economic transformation was necessary after communist policies led to widespread famine and the country's isolation from foreign technology. China's Economic Shift China's economic shift has not yet made it into a rich industrial country due to persisting problems in the country. China's reliance on state-controlled businesses is one hindrance that needs to be addressed for China to thrive. The high income gap between urban and rural areas is also a problem that continues to persist, despite several policies implemented by the government to address the issue. One reason for this is the lack of land ownership among peasants, making them less likely to invest in their farms to improve their income. Addressing these issues will be vital for China's future economic success. As we conclude our exploration of how Asia works, it's important to recap the chief takeaways that made these Asian economies thrive. The success recipe starts with household farming and land reforms, which foster a fertile foundation for further development. Next comes the focus on manufacturing, utilizing protectionist policies until competitiveness can be achieved. The crucial elements of export promotion and fostering domestic competition drive the economies further. Although these strategies have boded well for Asia's economic powerhouses, the journey is not without its challenges. Countries like China must still address issues such as the income gap between rural and urban areas and further land reforms. However, their remarkable success story presents a valuable template for other developing economies to emulate.